Hello everybody, welcome back to the Catch World Cup. We are here with yet another match after that short break. Back with Brazil versus Norway right now. This is another loser's bracket match we've got today. Brazil falling down to the loser's bracket after last week taking a 6-0 loss against China. Norway advancing from the loser's bracket last week beating the United Kingdom out 6-0 to zero as well. Two uh, powerful teams going to be facing off today. I'm one of your commentators, Chilier Pair. I will be joined by Quinton today, who is fresh off of a match pre uh, prior to this. How are we doing this afternoon? Uh, thank you for such a great introduction uh, there. I'm doing all right. I'm really happy after my match, uh, to be honest. And I'm also really excited for this one. It's always a blast. It costs in the weekend, so I'm always looking forward to it in the weekend. And the week, rather. Uh, we have two loser bracket teams facing off in this uh, quarterfinal. So one of these two teams will be leaving the tournament off this match. We have Brazil on Team Red, Norway on Team Blue. Um, Brazil, kind of hard matchup last weekend against the number one seed China. The, the Probably the biggest favorite to win it all. One of the biggest favorites to win it all. It was a relatively close match, but China kind of outscaled Brazil in that pool. So uh, now they're here, but I think they won more than just top 24. I think they can get more as well. Brazil being the 16th seed, I believe, so I think they at least won top 16, so this is the first step towards that. Yeah, good matchup here again. You got that 16th seed versus the 22nd seed. Overall, if we're looking, just statistically speaking, from last week, Brazil slightly higher scoring uh, than Norway across the board. Um, really only differences coming out in that double time pool. Um, I think, you know, we saw the most variation, the most similar picks coming out from both of the teams here. So uh, maybe some contention in that area today. But again, a different pool, a different week, completely different set of maps to test through here. So we're really looking for uh, some variation from the last week's matches, of course. And I think, you know, we don't talk about it a lot, but I think the uh, opponent that you're playing against is you know, kind of a, a big com component of how you perform in a match. Some weeks, I think your mental status and your team's morale going into some of these matches will affect your scores, you know, slightly. Uh, not the biggest margins, but maybe a, a bit of an effect there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, when you're the better team, I, most of the time I believe you're more nervous when you're the better team because you have something to lose, right? I think Norway can go into this match being the underdog, and I... I personally enjoy being the underdog. Some teams don't, some teams do. Uh, I think Norway does enjoy being the underdog because they have been so for quite a few years by now. Um, we see hidden tree bidding being picked, actually. Not sure what was banned. Uh, we should be able to get the ban yeah. up in just a second here, and then we'll kind of get everything. Oh, they. I think they oh, they pick HD3 actually. for a ban. Oh, I see. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, a little confusing. All, All right. right. Um, I think the big part about this pool is that it is way more difficult than last week. So the better scaling team should be able to win this on this one. I believe that's going to be Brazil, given their performance on the qualifiers. But we'll see. I think Noma Bracket and Hidden as well. I think Norway is kind of favored on Hidden. But interesting to see they ban Hidden 3 a bit. And we see Hidden 1 getting banned as well. So only one Hidden map left. Oh, wait, okay. They banned Hard Rock 2 and they picked Hidden 3. Uh, <laughs> okay, I think um, they got the order of picking and banning reversed, but that means that Hard Rock 2 is going to be banned and Heart Hidden 3 getting picked. So actually, that is the exact same as Belgium Italy, um, where uh, Hard Rock 2 gets banned and Hidden 3 gets picked. I think Hard Rock 2 is a really... A really rough map for people that do not often play hard work, so that's a reasonable bat. And then hidden one, I mean, well, we are hidden. It's it always gets bad. Obviously, the most niche skill set out of all of them, so that was not too unexpected. But we yeah. see hidden three getting picked. So convert hidden getting picked. It's about three minutes fifth. The three is thirty, I believe, in length. Air nine point three, so it's relatively high AR. So I think both teams will be quite comfortable. It's it's quite consistently difficult with like two small difficulty spikes, one around 600 combo and the other around I believe 1000 and then the ending is also a little rough but I think both teams can probably do well and, and yeah Brazil side was a cooler predominator and Endu coming in for Brazil and then on the Norwegian side Mile and Camera God I believe those were the, the main players for Norway and then the other players fill in a little bit and then Vanilla being the third one for Norway. Uh, all three of them 
have quite a lot of experience in the CBC, actually, the, on the Norwegian side. I believe Mile is in his third, fourth, even fifth uh, CBC. Vanilla the same, actually. So quite a lot of experience on the Norwegian side. Good amount of experience is going to start to matter here. You hit these quarterfinal rounds. Pools start to scale up in difficulty a little bit. We're starting to match kind of what you would see through uh, qualifiers, maybe get a little bit more difficult. And this is where the more consistent rosters overall are really going to start to shine. You know, you mentioned um, having two core players in for a lot of these maps kind of as sit-ins. And then, you know, it, it really does come down to filling that third player here. And then this week is where that is going to make a big difference in these teams and how they perform overall. And I think this hidden pick to start off is going to be uh, no short of, of, you know, some consistency in that. And uh, with Brazil having their first pick here, they're going to have a chance to start off strong on the board here. And hopefully Norway is going to have a chance to respond to this. Yeah, definitely. I believe this is actually Norway's pick, so that might be a little misleading. Either way, yeah. um, about the map, yeah, consistently difficult for the first summer to come and then there's a huge difficulty spike with like three wiggles that are kind of hard to hit so I'm expecting quite a lot of misses there. Uh, the beginning is relatively free combo. Definitely the first pick of your match. Also you see double miss of me coming in from Raku and Endu. I mean the beginning of the match is also a really nervous moment at least for me so that's why we see a lot of misses in the early beginning. Vanilla trading one of those but that's only fans for Norway actually so two FCs versus one and the, those three players miss once again but that's only going to favor Norway because they still have two FCs on camera god and mile. A big combos at the beginning here. It really does take some time just to get into the, the flow of things at the beginning of these matches here. Really just find your place within the map. And uh, unfortunately for both teams here, they are having equal amounts of trouble at the start here. It's going to be a miss from Vanilla, though. He's not going to have quite hit that 200 combo cap there. Um, so he is going to be reset before gaining any substantial amount of score here. It's going to be a bit of a lead for Brazil now as a cooler starts to hit that 200 combo. Endo going to be approaching it rather soon as well. Predominator going to be matching Mile right now at the beginning here. Yeah, definitely. And the hard part's coming up now. So I'm curious to see how many players will be able to hit it. And we see a double is coming from Brazil Ooh. in the beginning, but also a, 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 a complete reset. Everyone missing on that part. And that's going to be a 20,000 score advantage for Norway in the beginning of this match and a complete race on the board so that uh, is going to stay blind but mile dropping once more it's going to tie things up actually it's going to get really close if as soon as everyone is above to combo and no and vanilla really matching each other right now it basically is just the difference between uh mile and a cooler right now just that slight score lead from the early performance from him and then a couple more breaks on the brazilian side right now not going to be doing them any favors as we get into a little bit more of an easy section after that spike there, we're going to see some combos start to be built up and continuously broken. Unfortunately, Brazil not able to hold it after that part here. About a quarter of the way left in the map right now. Norway with some more consistent combos. You did see a break on Mile. Camera God putting up a combo right now. Vanilla is going to start to uh, count it up as well. Definitely. Camera God and Predominator definitely carrying the teams right now. Mile bringing once more. I think they have quite a huge buffer in Norway, actually. So that miss shouldn't matter too much. Especially because Vanilla and Camera are both above 200 combo right now. And that's doing huge things for Norway, whilst all the Brazilian players are above 200 as well right now. But Vanilla and Endo tra trading. Actually, 5 miss only Mile holding on that difficult section. That's once again favoring Norway. And then Mile dropping once more Endo trading. So a lot of miss happening in the uh, third quarter of this match for Vanilla as well. There's no combos on the board, actually. Ooh. Predominant. A cool action is going to favor Brazil. Ooh. Norway's had so a lot of happening. misses in that section. And yeah, with Predominant missing there. I think the, the combo advantage is slightly in favor of Brazil right now due to having one combo above 200. Uh, but Endu dropping there, this is going to get really close in the end. Vanilla and Predominator trading, but that's two versus one. A cool versus Smile and Camera God. It's going to go back over by the end, I think. Yeah, there it goes right there. The double combo on Norway. It's going to break, though. That's not, That might actually be enough to throw it. That's a triple miss on both sides, actually. Predominator one dropping once, but it's going to get really close to the end. And oh my god! <laughs> What? I think oh that is a Brazil God. win. I think that is a Brazil win. That is a Brazil point by 50. 50, 50 points. 50, 50 points! 50 points? What? That's actually that's the closest margin I've ever seen on this stage. That is actually insane. I believe A Cooler held, held on to his combo just like 20 notes longer than everyone else in the lobby, and that was a difference maker there. That is insane. 50 points. These teams are really evenly matched on this hit of map. That's insane. That is the closest I've ever seen. Endo with 31 misses, kind of starting on the Brazilian side. But then Vanilla 
pretty much counting that as well. Now, oh my goodness, we're in for the treats, actually. But it's a great point for Brazil. So 1-0 scoreline and their pick to come next. But 50 points. That is absolutely insane. Oh my goodness. That is a score gap that you do not see too often uh, in quarterfinals level play there. That is two very evenly matched teams to start this off right now. Brazil's going to have a big, big advantage going into the start of this match here if they're able to pick up a break point, consolidate this, and uh, set themselves off right here. Of course, being that higher seeded team, they are going to look to try and gain some dominance here at the beginning of the match. And uh, with that 50 point lead, I think they're going to be feeling pretty good about going into their next pick maybe although norway looking at just as strong both teams you know have an equal amounts of struggle on the hidden pick they're looking for a different mod category i think from brazil yeah definitely uh it's really heartbreaking for norway to lose your pick by 50 points so i think losing it by 100,000 points is less painful than losing it by 50. so we see brazil going hard to quite immediately i think that's a reasonable pick coming from them uh, Pre-Dominator especially is like a hard to come with main. has been around for ages. And then Ecole as well, really good hard for play. So this was expectable. Um, and I believe Norway did show some struggles on hard for collapse a week. So, I, I mean, they banned hard for too. So it makes sense to go for that hard for back. Even though hard to one and hard to are very different maps. Hard to one is more a consistency based map. Uh, the patterns are, well, consistently difficult. Just as comparable to this hidden tree actually. So. You can miss all over the place, but it's also relatively easy for these players to have seen because it's just consistently difficult. So you've also, you have to pay attention to it, uh, all the time, let's put it that way. Um, yeah, uh, it's 3 minutes 15 length, AR10 obviously off hit and is added. Math by Dave, and it doesn't happen a lot, but Dave, Hartwick, and Comfortable in one sentence, that is quite unique. But um, it definitely is relatively comfortable, I do think. And we see McKenzie yeah. actually stepping in for Brazil, and then Mile also dropping out for Sisef on the Norwegian side. Well, good start off to the match here. If Brazil thinks they're going to be a little bit more consistent here than generally, these hard rock one picks are pretty favored to that here. Nothing too special in terms of statistics, of course. Nothing too small, nothing too crazy. And then, of course, you mentioned that length really is the big uh, component of this that makes the difference here it's being able to hold your nerves it's being able to hold that consistency no breaks in the middle or beginning parts here really going to make a difference although again given that earlier pick we did see a lot of similar breaks from both of the two teams here so it it, uh, it does worry me for both sides here it is going to come down to you know who's just feeling a little bit more comfortable at the beginning of this match here you mentioned it takes some time to get into it so Hopefully that buffer time is kind of up for a lot of these players here. Yeah, definitely. That, that's a valid point to make there. Um, we saw a lot of actually like combo resets on that hidden tree, so that was interesting to see. Also, a lot of like double misses coming from both teams at the same time. They were, I mean, very evenly matched actually. So that was um, something to look out for. Actually, Brazil wants to put in Tanner. I think that. I mean, Tanner, I believe, is top 200 in the world, so that makes some sense on a, a, a typical consistency-based map like this one. Well, see if we can uh, get started with the map here. I guess Brazil may be having a little trouble setting their uh, roster here, I guess, missing the timer for the Switch, so I think they'll be running with the same set of players that they've got in here. Uh, we might have to, yeah, we'll have to see about that. Um, Mile not being here for Norway is kind of huge, I do believe. I think Mile, yeah, as I said already, is, is the most experienced player, the captain as well. So probably Sysa feels just more comfortable on this. Should definitely be the case. But I expect that Mile and Kamigot to be like those two main players playing pretty much everything. Kamigot does stay in. Uh, Kamigot, I believe, is the highest ranked Norwegian player. Probably just shy of top 100, if I'm not mistaken. Has a lot of really good hidden scores. Being no for his hidden, actually, so... I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was playing hard with hidden on this one. Well... Right now, I guess we're going to get a player switched over. Uh, Brazil going to make their last-minute roster switch here, and then finally get started with this hard rock one. This player is getting a little bit of a, a rest here in between the two picks. 
going to get a chance to become very familiar with this song right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not too bad in my opinion. Uh, there, there's worse songs in the pool. There's also better songs in the pool, but I can, I can. This is I can bear this. This, this is a banger. This is a banger right here. <laughs> if there's a song that I'd rather be stuck with listening to on the beginning of this, it is for I mean, Okay, actually, that's a, that's a valid point as well. It's kind of, <laughs> I would say, relaxing somewhat. It, it, it makes me, it makes the nerves go a little bit away, only a little. As soon as you load up in that map, that uh, those are back. And that, that's the main part about this map, right? Uh, it's about 1,400 combo. As soon as you find that four-digit combo, you, you tend to get really nervous, in my opinion. And there's some, there's, they're not edge jumps and they're not memory jumps, but there are some wide jumps around, like 1,100 combo, and that part, in my opinion, is the hardest part of the map. And then that, I mean, it's so weird, just because there's four numbers above your cache instead of like three or two, it makes such a difference when playing a tournament. It's such a weird dynamic. Well, all right, now we'll see what happens. I definitely agree with you. You know, you start to build up those, uh, those larger combos there, and you know, whether or not you play scoreboard on or off or the, the crown in the middle or, you know, you take those pauses in the middle of the map to see the other team and there is just, you know, even the most experienced of players really do find a little bit of nerves in between uh, some of these picks on the higher combos here. I can't imagine playing with the crown in the middle, though, personally. <laughs> I think that's really distracting. I don't know if some... I guess there are players that do it. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, we see Tanner actually making his appearance instead of a cooler. So okay, there we go. Uh, a completely different roster actually for Brazil. Tanar, Tanar, Konohana, Lucia, and Mackenzie stepping in. So no Enu, no Predominator, and no Aikul. Interesting. Uh, Predominator, I thought it was a hard to main, but apparently his teammates feel more confident on it. Uh, also maybe? the switch. Yeah, also the switch from the hidden and the hard work could be hard on some people. So probably a good idea to then just. Throw out the entire team and put the, uh, the three other members. I mean, it shows Brazil's versatility, though, right? Being able to switch around six players in two maps, it's kind of insane. There's not a lot of teams that can do this at this stage. So I believe all Brazilians are evenly matched or close to evenly matched. Or they have, like, a specific skill sets that they're more comfortable with. Uh, either way, we're stepping into Hard Core. We see Kami God of Vanilla putting on Hidden with Hard Track. It's allowed in CWC. It's only for reading purposes, no score bonus whatsoever. Um, on the other side, Ten Tenor, Kona, Lucia, and Mackenzie all opting for regular hard rock. Some people prefer it, and some people don't. It's a uh, yeah, pure preference, honestly. Yeah, it's a good. Um, I think reading reset. Sometimes you practice some of these maps a little bit for these later stage matches here, and especially with you know how fast things are coming at you, it really does help some players just keep better track of it, just to not have to think about it constantly. You know, you're visualizing all of this, and you play it so many times, it kind of certain patterns get stuck in your head, and if you you know catch it wrong a couple of times, then. Uh, might throw you off a bit here. Norway's gonna have a little bit of a stronger start here, actually, but Vanilla is actually gonna trade out that early miss from Lucia, so we'll have a slight score lead for Norway at the beginning with plenty of time left to go at the beginning of this pick here. The Hiddens not paying off as much uh, for Norway here. It doesn't seem to be making too much of a difference, but Brazil definitely having a worse time at the start of this map here. That complete reset, except for Camera God, actually, so that's favorite Norway once again, comparable to that lost map where Cameron got that mile way two wants to hold on to combo, so that's about already 80,000 or 90,000 score difference. And Konohan and Lucia on the bottom left side is really struggling actually, only at 95 accuracy. And that is kind of bottlenecking Brazil at this moment. Tanner and McKinch currently at the one miss, so that is good for them. Size is hoping one more that's going to favor Brazil. But Nora has quite a huge buffer actually due to Cameron God's combo right now. Yeah, that big, uh, that one FC always makes a huge difference in these matches here. If you've got one player who's really confident on a map, it can make the difference a lot of the times as you start to approach these later stages here. Just these massive performances compared to everyone else. I mean, you see combo breaks from actually the entire Norwegian team right now. Camera got the only combo remaining. Brazil going to have a chance to bring this a little bit closer, but there's another miss from Lucia, so it's just Thenar coming in with the combo right now. 
pretty solid on the accuracy, significantly above the rest of his teammates right now. Camera got doing the most for his team, but it's not going to matter as they continue seeing breaks from Zyce up and Vanilla. Yeah, Camera God is putting in so much effort for Norway, right? But his teammates are not able to support him. Let's go give the advance over to Brazil for the first time in this match, uh, in this map rather. And Tanner only had the one miss, but Kenji had a two miss. So, and Camera God dropping that. That is huge for Brazil. No commas on the Norwegian side, but Vanilla dropping down. So, about two trades coming in from Brazil. Only McKenzie right now above 200, but that still favors Brazil. So, that's the score bar is loading up about 50,000 point difference. But McKenzie drops, so. This is going to get a little bit close, but I do believe Norway needs one more miss. And Norway dropping once more is actually going to favor Brazil once again. There's so much happening right now. And I think that Brazil is currently in fa uh, favorites with the combos, but Tanner dropping. People are struggling quite a lot in this part, actually. Vanilla trading one of those. And Kanoa Lelusia being the one with the highest combo right now. Actually, Camera God also love to win combo once again, so. But that's already 80,000, so Korea is actually in favor of Brazil, and it's going to increase with that mystery size and vanilla. Yeah, a lot of big breaks from Norway here. Two 200 combos put up on the side of Brazil right now. Lucia is going to break one of them, but Thanar is going to come in with another. Again, you see a lot of those low intensity sections really giving players a lot of trouble on this hard rock. Um, it's just being able to maintain your precision, you know, on that, or when you're dashing back and forth, and it, it, it is something that. You know, provides more trouble than I think a lot of people expect. Camera God's gonna try and get a combo going at the ending here, but it might be far too late. Brazil has a lot of better combos towards the refrain section there, and even with these two big ones on Norway to the end here, density just not allowing not enough time left. It's gonna be close though. Actually, I believe the score is going to be about 60,000 points, but honestly, Camera God himself had a really solid performance on this map, outscoring everyone in the lobby by about 70,000 points. But sadly, his two teammates, somewhat, actually Vanilla, especially, somewhat struggling on this hard to one pick, not being too comfortable. Actually, we see two A ranks on the Brazilian side as well, which is um, not too promising on the hard to rack, but they do beat out Norway in the end. But this was really close, actually, um, especially in the middle section. A lot of misses on the slower parts, which is definitely one of the hardest things about hearts or being the AR being so high and then a lot of misses in those slower sections. But Brazil only barely taking it, so they aren't feeling that safe on the hard to record right now, I imagine. The camera got especially 1.07 million is a really good score coming in from him. So 2 0 score in Brazil, but this could have been a 1 1 or even a 0 2 in front of Norway. So really close match currently, but they do confirm that break point, which is huge for Brazil. You have that one point, that one breakpoint buffer for now, and that is crucial. If they just keep on winning their own picks from now on, they win the match. So that's that's the advantage of having that one breakpoint buffer. Yeah, definitely big, uh, you know, important breakpoints at the beginning of these up to quarterfinals now. So we've moved from best of nine to best of eleven, and you know, with more points on the board in order to win the match, it really does become increasingly. Uh, important that you are able to consistently grab your own picks here and unfortunately for Norway you know they almost had their own pick at the beginning that 50 score margin there Brazil just barely pulling up some better combos they definitely looked a lot better on their own hard rock pick here Norway's gonna go straight in for a Nomad 2 pick right now Go for Nomad 2 so we're switching out of that hidden bracket I think this is a reasonable pick coming from Norway uh, this map is I would say the most conventional one being it's mapped by Gems, who probably the most popular OC catch mapper at this point. His maps have been, yeah, he has quite a lot of maps ranked, and they're quite, all of them are relatively similar to this style of mapping. It's quite technical, but I think most people should be quite. Oh, actually, they go for mixed mod too instead of no mod too. So um, that's, the, that's the issue with mixed mod, like the M and the N are kind of similar, so it's easy to trip up. So they go actually for mixed mod too, which is. Uh, this map is something fair. It's it's brutal. This is so brutal. Um, it is CS5 AR8, and so we have one player playing AR8 Hidden, one player playing AR8 Nomad, and then one player playing CS6.5 Hard Rock, and it is a memory map as well. Like, there's at least seven or eight memory jumps in there, so this is really, really rough, and I'm expecting a lot of misses to be seen on this one. 
out. Again, a little bit of a different pick here in the mixed mod rather than what we saw uh, earlier. A little bit more technically intensive on this one than what we would have seen on the no mod too here. And I think that was uh, kind of a point of strength for Norway on the earlier pick. You know, if you look back to Hidden, definitely more similar to this style of map than what you would have seen on the Hard Rock one from Brazil. And, you know, while they did end up losing it, I think they were stronger as a whole roster. And if they just, you know, get rid of some of those uh, maybe early nerves, those early breaks here, it's going to be a better time for them on this. And, you know, you, you'll kind of see yeah. with the, the mod confidence as well, um, a lot of that hidden confidence coming out from players like Camera God or even the Hard Rock will be kind of a big thing. And that's the that's what those these mixed mod picks, you know, you don't need the full roster to be confident on a specific mod category like you do on some of the specifics. So you can really put up that one strong player here, have them have a good score and not have to force them onto something that you know they might not have as good of a time with. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, Camera God being the MVP of that last Hard Rock pick makes perfect sense to put him on Hard Rock on this one. Because um, this map's also even harder in Hard Rock, so I assume he's going to... Well, that score is going to be bigger between him and that Brazilian Hard Rock player, most likely. I think Tanner, did he play Hard He did play Hard Rock 1. He was the mm -hmm. best Hard Rock player on Hard Rock 1 for Brazil, so that's expectable. We see a Myland Predominator on the hidden, AR8 hidden. Not easy whatsoever. And then we see a cool and Vanilla on the Nomad. Even AR8 Nomad... Not to be underestimated, it's really it's less specific of a skill set than Air 8 Hidden, but it's still not easy whatsoever. Uh, the map is 2 minutes in length, about 700 combo, a little bit above 700, so um, sprint this one, not a marathon. Uh, we see Mal being the first to drop in the beginning section, but I assume that's not going to be mattering, as we will see plenty of drops later on. And Camera God being the second to a predominator trading once, but obviously the score multipliers do differ for hard to get hidden, but it's going to give a small fans in favor of Brazil. But Tana trading one of those missing from Camera God, so and a lot of mishapping actually. Vanilla being the only one still with the full with the FC actually, so that's going to favor Norway, I do believe. Yeah, Norway just a little bit better. Vanilla putting up that 200 combo right now, looking really solid at the start of this. You know, again, we always talk about it in multiple World Cups. You know, the niche of, of uh, a lower approach rating really is something that is not played quite as often uh, in solo play. So you really only get a chance to to play a lot of these maps and tournaments for some players. And, you know, it's just about how comfortable you are going to be from the beginning of this. And you can kind of just see it from Norway, slightly more proficient on vanilla right now, which is making a bit of a difference. It's not going to be as prominent as Brazil is having a better performance overall as a team right now. We'll see if Camera God and Mile are able to pick it up a bit here. But another break from Camera God and Mile, only traded out by Predominator, but Aqualer is going to find another break. So Brazil is going to start to lose a bit of that score lead right now as Norway pulls ahead with Vanilla. Yeah, definitely we see three more misses coming in, but that's already a 100,000 score difference in favor of Brazil. So if Vanilla, if vanilla drops there, that's Ooh. huge for Brazil. Actually, I think the score if is quite huge, actually. The, the Heart of player being Tanner is outscoring Camera God by about 200,000 points. That's making a huge difference. P Dominate is also beating Mal by 100k. Vanilla is trying everything she can right now, but I think the... Uh, how would, you, how would you say the deal is sealed, I believe the saying is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to seal the deal. That's how they say it. But actually, Brazil winning this one by 200,000 points. So the beginning looked promising, especially if Vanilla score being 900k uh, is really huge on the Nomad. But Mile being outscored by Predominate by 100,000 points and Camera God by 200,000 points is making a huge difference in favor of Brazil. That's going to be a second break point. So this pick wasn't it in the end, sadly. And that's 3 of Brazil, actually. So really good performance coming in from the, I mean, the harder player and the hidden player from Brazil. And they do show quite a lot of strength in these mixed mod categories with these mild specialists, right? Um, beautiful scores. But actually, Vanilla, like, missing on that lost hard section, um, it, that, that one is really hard, the, the back and forth streams with the wiggle right after. It's not easy to hit that, but everything else, she did FC, so that was a beautiful score coming from her as well. Well, good start, but unfortunately not quite enough. You know, you get into these later stages here and, you know, I think uh, the quarterfinals is a, an interesting stage because it, it most closely reflects what we've seen through qualifiers performance and given Brazil just overall a little bit more consistent, they have a little bit more versatility within their roster thus far in the match. And I think being able to switch out more of these players shows that they have a more consistent roster for a lot of these picks. And right now that's really showing through, you know, Norway, maybe one or two consistent players really high scoring on some of these picks but the difference is really really made by 
you know, versatility of the roster in yeah. these later stages. And right now, Brazil is definitely the, the champion of that category, and they're going to try and keep that up. Yeah, if they can confirm this breakpoint again, so looking at a four score line, then that is a huge buffer. And I'm not sure if Nori can come back from that, but obviously they first have to pick, and we'll see after that. Double time is still open. So Air 9 double time, Air 8.8 double time still open. Nomad also still open, so. And we see Nomad 1 getting picked. I find this a really interesting pick. I think this is. This could be a mistake on Brazilian side, underestimating Norway's Nomad performance. Because Vanilla, I mean, she outscores a cooler by about 130,000 points. That's a lot. Although this map is quite different. This is a 3 minutes 30 in length, Air 9.3. Consistency based map, um, but it's. Kind of rough on the spacing, in my opinion, so easy to trip up on it. Interesting pick coming in from Brazil. Not wanting to go for Air 9 double time, for example, which we have seen quite a lot in previous matches. Um, it's also, well, it's, it's less niche of a skill set than low ER hidden, but higher ER DTs, well, I think most of the teams can kind of guess if they're better or worse at it than other teams. Whilst, like, a no one one like this one, kind of uncertain about how the other team is going to perform this. And Cameron got a mile. On the Norwegian side, those do look kind of scary and nomad, I do have to say. So this might backfire for Brazil, but we'll have to see. Even though, I mean, the song is a, is a banger. I, I prefer this <laughs> one over Heart of One, personally. But um, I can see Heart of One as well. I think. Yeah, also, also very good. Again, you're kind of going back to that consistency here. And you've seen Camera God and Mile just undershooting some things a little bit with the hidden. And I think, you know, you take that off, you get the Nomad. It's a little bit uh, more comfortable to read in some cases. You know, it, it, hidden is one of those mods, I think, where, you know, despite being a, a, a preference mod, um, it really does kind of matter how you're feeling that day on hidden. You know, there will be some days where you're on point with hidden feels no different than no mod or any other mod combination that you could throw onto a map. And then you have some days where, you know, you're just slightly off a little bit. You're not feeling as confident with your movements and it really does make a big difference in how you, you know, your score is reflected here. So I think we're looking for maybe that shift from Norway that we haven't been able to see yet. And I think, you know, you mentioned Brazil, maybe treading into some more uncertain waters here with this pick that'll be reflected very early on in this match with the performance. Definitely. Um, yeah, I, as I said, I think it's a it's a, a bizarre pick in my opinion. But then again, we don't know how they did in practice and all that. So um, we'll see how it goes. He's size of actually stepping in instead of Vanilla. And then on the Brazilian side, we see McKenzie making his second appearance. Uh, he did play that uh, harder one pick. So Kono Hanna, Lucia, McKenzie, and a cooler facing off Camry Gob, Mile, and size. So I think both teams have a really strong roster for this one. So I'm curious to see how this is going to go. Well, interested to see here. We're seeing a similar roster on Brazil to some of the previous picks here. Norway bringing Sicef back in um, for the first time since that first hidden pick. So, see, bringing it back for the no mod here. Will Norway be able to finally secure themselves a point, a break point, uh, no less right now? We'll see. What happens? This, you know, it's we're, we're starting to get to kind of like the last few opportunities here for them to get a point on the board here. You know, Brazil secures a fourth point. It does go back to Norway's pick, but you know, you're you're basically in a unique spot where it is literally impossible to win regardless. So, you know, you got to get two break points on the board, and that's not something that you want to be in. Sisef going to find a very early miss there. Not going to matter too much in the grand scheme of things, but it is going to give, um, you know, with that a cooler break, obviously. But close, close start here, and we've got a long way to go. Yeah, definitely point out, this is a huge pick for both teams. Uh, Brazil can put the foot on the gas in this one, but Norway can put their foot behind the door, right? So really to see how both teams do. Small advantage for Norway because those miss from size were earlier from a cooler. Uh, when, as soon as everyone's buffed to a combo, we'll see about the score. But I think it's about actually mile dropping there is going to give the advantage back in favor of Brazil. Map stream is 30 in length, so plenty of time for Brazil or Norway to find additional missing. McKenzie being one of those, so that's going to actually accrue as well. M mile trading as well, so only Kona and Lucia and Cameron got on the up, uh, up top with the FCs inside for the turn of combo. Cameron got dropping. That's two missing on either side. It's going to be really, really close, in fact. 
Yeah, very close. Camera God trying to do a little bit with that combo alongside Saisef there, but Lucia really holding it down for the Brazilian roster right now. And there goes the combo on Saisef as well, so there's really nothing on Norway to respond to these two 200 pluses. And there goes Mukinchi though. Lucia still pulling it out for Brazil right now, holding this combo. A cooler gonna start to bring it up to back uh, Lucia up right now, but Norway got a little ways to go to recover from this mile. Continuously having just a lot of trouble on these refrain sections right now. Not quite able to put up some sustained combo, and that's really a big part of why Norway has this uh, decent score gap being put up, despite the fact that Camera got the side step are actually having fairly good plays. Yes, I think Camera got being the second and third best player in the room right now. Camera got dropping there, it's not helping Norway whatsoever. Size as well, no combos on Norway really. Mild triple is coming from Norway. Kono Hand and Lucia right now, the only one with any combo. And putting in so much more effort ends up dropping though, but the damage has been done, I do believe. That's a huge score difference in favor of Brazil. And that's, yeah, I believe the close 100,000 points halfway to two thirds into this map. So if Norway went to get back into this map, they have to triple C, I believe, the rest of the map, and hopefully more Brazil misses. Well, they're gonna need a couple more here. Brazil. Gonna be down in combo for just a little bit here. Norway's gonna hit that combo cap earlier here, but like you mentioned, they're really gonna have to make a full 180 turnaround at the end of this map. Lucia gonna help them out a little bit with the miss there, but Camera God not doing them any favors by dropping the combo again as well. You can't really have these higher scoring players on your team finding misses in the latter quarter of the map right now when you need to be making these turnarounds. And right now, Lucia gonna trade it out again. Both of these top two players really not having as good of a time as they did in the beginning, but uh, luckily for Lucia right now, Makanchi and Aikul are really holding down the latter parts here. Mile and Sisef trying to help, but Sisef's gonna find that break again here. And I think that combo lead that Brazil has is really gonna stay maintained in the last bits here. Yeah, lost in the map, and that, that there was two huge combos on Brazil. Actually, Makanchi has some drop metal. Dumb is coming from Norway, and Aikul right now holding on for Brazil, and I think. And that, that's a huge performance coming from Aikul. Mile swinging a lot, camera got dropping once, where Sisef trying to do what he can, but the map's coming to an end at a huge combo on Aikul. But I'm actually also supporting that beautifully, and I believe Brazil is just a more consistent team on this Nomad 1 big Aikul above 700 combo right now, and that's the score that's about 130,000 points in favor of Brazil, so... I mean, the, the, the dynamic of this map was mostly one of Brazil holding on and everyone else in the lobby missing. And sadly for Norway, it was twice a Brazilian player being the one to hold on. Conan and Lucia and Aikula both had their runs on this one. Aikula being uh, getting the MVP, I believe, with 920,000 points. Sisev actually only the four miss, so a huge performance come for Sisev, but Mile especially somewhat struggling on this Nomad one pick, surprisingly so. And that is going to give a second break point in favor of, actually, never mind, a second uh, uh, one pick by Brazil in their favor, so a 4 0 score line. Um, for them, and I do see Mile picking TT2 immediately, and this one, ah, oh, this is such a great map. Uh, map by Bunray, a Siren Room, I mean, Siren Room is a great artist in my opinion. Um, and this map is, is really technical, it's a really technical air, 8.3 double time pick. Um, it's really short as well, about 750 combo, I do believe, but yeah, it, it, it's technicality, you'll see it soon, it's, it's, ah, oh, it's, it's amazing in my opinion. Sadly, I... I personally didn't get the favorite to play it. But, um, yeah, not easy. Not an easy map whatsoever. You have to be a DT specialist for this one, I do believe. Um, and I think both teams don't really have a player that stands out as being a DT specialist. I think more, most of them are hidden and hard with mains, but I could see, it. for example, Camera God up top there, I think you could see a really good score coming from him. But Conan and Lucia actually had no one, one being the. The, the rock for Brazil, especially in the first half, could also put out a really good score in this one, I do believe. We've been looking for those consistent performances on Brazil. You saw in the previous pick here, obviously a different skill set, but you know, just overall that one player performance backed up very consistently across their side here. Norway really finding a lot of two and three way breaks on these sections here. They don't have as much of that consistency at this upper level, I think, as they would want today. You know, Camera God has been trying to make some big plays here. Sisef as well. Vanilla had a little bit more trouble, I think, than she was, you know, kind of wanting on that last pick here and maybe a bit of a turnaround on this DT right now as, you know, they're back to their own pick, a little bit more of a comfortable position, something that uh, they're used to. Definitely. The map is uh, 2 minutes 25, so often DTs added that is like, I believe, 1 minute 30 or something. Um, so a really short one as well. Uh, only 7 combos, so... 
Um, it's consistently hard. There's like this middle section where there's uh, low density but quite spaced out, and that's personally my, like my biggest weakness. I would say like the, the it's the hardest part from, in my opinion. Um, but I can see people miss pretty much everywhere on this one as well. We see McKinchy coming back in, Tanar and Conan and Lucia, so I believe that is only a cooler stepping out for his double time On the other side, we see Vanilla coming in from Mile. Sizef off this really good Noma 1 performance, coming back in for DT2, and then Camera God uh, being the, well, the god for no way, the highest ranked player, so he's going to stay in for, I believe, every single map. Oh, 600k incoming, or is that 800k? That is not looking good for the I'm curious to see how these teams are going to perform in this. Well, based on Lucia's previous performance, the 800k <laughs> might be a bit of an undershot, just doubting themselves on the uh, ability to play this map, which I, you know, I guess if you've got a technically intensive pick like this, especially on DT, it really does cause some uncertainties here, but um, you know, maybe, you know, if you, if you, if you expect failure and you do better, it feels a hell of a lot better than, uh, all right, I couldn't tell if that was Bancho not connecting at their beginning or if uh, everybody on Brazil was not ready for the start of this map. Oh, I think they just weren't ready. We see a bunch of mids coming. Actually, Sais being the only one to full come. Actually, McKenzie as well. So two full comes on the board, but small advantage in favor of Norway. Hey, I look at this map. It's so really technical. And, oh, it's a beautiful map, actually. Vanilla dropping. McKenzie trading immediately. Kind of triple miss coming from Brazil. And actually, Camagon and Sais right now. This pick is really good for Norway in the beginning stages of this map. Vanilla dropping once more, but... Brazil's not able to hold on to any combo, actually. So early advantage in Norway. Size is dropping, but Camera got the only one above 200 combo, and Brazil especially struggling. This is already a 200,000 score difference in favor of Norway. Ooh, Camera God is bringing it home right now. Camera God, this, is, this man is in the league of his own right now. <laughs> Beautiful performance. So precise, so prepared for these patterns here. Really, nothing off guard here. That hidden as well, just exceptional reading ability on this as well. He's absolutely unwavering. Finally finds a break in the latter half of the map here, but not before a significant amount of damage done against the Brazilian team. They're gonna find another double break. Fanar putting up some combo right now. Absolutely means nothing though. That massive score gap created by Norway at the beginning of this pick. Yeah, this is actually kind of a massacre in my opinion. Nori completely outperformed Brazil in double time, and I do believe these first two picks from Nori should have just come from the double time pool. They they found Brazil's weakness, I do believe, and that's a really as a, a close to a two hundred. I mean, over two hundred fifty thousand score difference. So beautiful performance, especially Camer got two misses. Five misses on Tanner, are not too bad, but size of even outscoring Tanner. Um, Vanilla so much struggling, but then McKenzie struggling even harder, and that's nowhere on the board finally. But I hope it is not too late. They did, I do believe, they found Brazil's weakness being double time. So I'm assuming we're going to see double time one uh, being picked after Brazil's pick now. So uh, beautiful performance, especially from Camera God, but Norway in general. And it, I mean, it's so satisfying to see someone hit all those patterns with the hidden modifier <laughs> as well on such a technical map. So. Great performance from Camera Gun, and, and, and he's been playing really well for Norway right now. And um, on a map like this, where there's some solo care potential, he definitely showed up. And we see Mixmon 1, I believe, getting picked immediately by yes. Brazil. So, yeah, their, their Mixmon 2 performance was really, really solid. So, this is a reasonable pick, I do believe. Yeah, this will be a good one for them to respond to here. They're going to have to try and get as many points on the board as they can for their own picks up here, of course. So, you know, if they know Norway is going to be feeling good on the DT pool right now. They've got a full three picks left available to them right now, and that is uh, a lot of room to work with here. Of course, they're going to need to take break points in between some of those, and I think that was kind of the big difference with Brazil getting the earlier break points. You know, regardless of how Norway plays at the ending of this match here, they need to be able to respond to that to even have a chance to have access to a lot of their uh, other picks here. So, you know, we'll see if they're able to make it there. Of course, Brazil having looked pretty good across these picks uh, so far... Um, this map, of course, being a custom edit for the tournament here. We are going to get into one of the first of that here. A-Cooler feeling pretty confident on this one, it seems here, but he's going to have to respond. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to see a lot more comfortable plays from here on Brazil on the mixed mod picks. Yeah, I do believe as well. I think Brazil's... Uh, this is probably the best pick out of all picks in the pool lift. Uh, so I really like this from Brazil. And on the other hand, we have Sizer play really well on Nomad on Nomad 1, so this pick is not too 
different from that Nomad pick, so I'm curious to see how Cypher is going to perform. Mile on Hidden, and then Camera God on Harter. That's a solid Norwegian Ross, but I think Brazil still has the advantage. Given that Mixed Mod 2 performance as well, right? Which was also really beautiful coming from Brazil. But if you're in Norway, you want to win this point. Otherwise, you're looking at five match points for Brazil, and that is going to be really rough. If they win this one, and they can pick double time with that one, we're only looking at a one great point deficit. So, a lot of a lot of stake right now for Norway. They're definitely not out of this one just yet. About the map, map I have the floor, as you said already, a custom map, two minutes and uh, 13 in length. Um, for Nomad and Hidden players, it's uh, you have to hold your dash quite a lot in this map. There's a lot of uh, really fast-paced streaming sections, but I do believe it's relatively comfortable for most players. Uh, for the harder players, I haven't personally played with hearts, so I'm not too certain, but I do believe it's also relatively safe for This one is definitely easier than the Mixed Mod 2 pick, given how it's like way different and way more well, comfortable being AR 9.3 instead of AR 8 and then CS4 instead of CS5 and so on and so forth. So, expecting way less misses coming from Brazil. We see, uh, for, coming in from both teams actually, we see Brazil drafting Tanner on Hardwork. A cool, I believe, is going to be the Nomad player and then Andrew the Hidden player, or those could be switched around and then Camera God, Hardwork, Mile, Hidden, and Decisive on the Nomad for the Norwegian side. Definitely get a chance to see you real quick. We'll get into the map here. Predictions out. Everyone feel free to uh, roast him if they were wrong. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Looking good. And we also got the, the mirrored hidden and no white on the bottom side. It's really satisfying. So I'm glad they uh, they placed themselves like this. We see Karagal choosing hidden with the hard but he's been doing that the entire match and it's been working out for him. So only for reading purposes. No score bonus whatsoever. However, the hardware multiplier is 1.12, so the hardware player is a little bit more important than the Nomad and Hidden player. So hardware misses are more painful for your team. In the beginning section of this map, everyone seems to be relatively comfortable approaching one of the combo. Actually, Mile and Endu both Hidden players missing in the beginning, and that's going to tie things up, stabilize as well. But Tana dropping, Camera God not trading, is going to give the early fans in favor of Norway. Yeah, it's a lot of these hard rock players are really a big liability, I think, on these, you know, faster picks requires more dashing back and forth here. It really is. Uh, it requires a lot of control that is hard to keep consistently right now. Camera God's doing a very good job of it as he has been the entire match right now. A cooler holding the only combo left on Brazil for this major difference here. Mile and Camera God being able to make this work for Norway at the beginning here. Some time left though, a shorter pick on this one, of course, just over two minutes. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room for breaks and we'll see if uh, we see a recovery from Thanar with the hard rock towards the latter half of the map here. Just that one break from him Endo as well. Uh, Sysef going to be finding an extra one for Norway here. So it is just still Mile and Camera God. There goes Thanar with the hard rock. Again, we talk about just how difficult this pick is with that. And it's going to be a five-way break, except for Camera God really putting in all the stops for Norway. Yeah, once again, this is Camera God show right now. Camera God has put his foot on the gas and that's going to give some Really good buffer in front for no reaction, but we see a double miss coming from them and only one trade coming from Endu. So I think they're still in favor right now, but they uh, Brazil's coming closer and closer. But we see a double miss coming from both hard to play, so that's going to stabilize. And actually, it's Camera God dropping once more is going to give you advantage for Brazil, but Endu dropping as well. But Mile uh, only a size for uh, Tana right now, but Tana being hard to play. There's so many misses happening in this ending section. Brazil still in front, Camera God, size of Mile, Triple Miss coming from Norway, and Tana being 200 combo in this ending section is giving Brazil a slight buffer, but they're definitely not over the line just yet. Camera God dropping once more is just favoring Brazil right now. Oh, Thanar does find a break. It's going to be close into the ending here. This would be a big break point for Norway as Thanar continues to find breaks, but I don't know if there's going to be enough time. Norway with A-Cooler holding that combo into the ending and all the breaks. That's going to be it into the end. Brazil oh. just barely grabbing that one. Um, okay, uh, I think Endu might have failed. Uh, Did he fail he the have, ending? <laughs> given he had no no fail on, actually, so we might have to look into this. Um, I believe they did win the pick. I believe based on yeah. based on scores towards the ending, Brazil had the lead before he failed at the ending. Uh, yes, Brazil won that pick by a little over a hundred thousand. 120-ish yeah. thousand almost? Yeah. Yeah, I think Brazil did win this one, but that is interesting. 
Uh, I was not expecting a fail there, but either way, we see uh, the, the, the Nomad and the Hidden player on the Norwegian side struggling a little bit more than I anticipated, and that's going to give the advantage to Brazil on that pick, and that's going to be 5-1 scoreline, that's not pretty for Norway. Huge task ahead of them, it's not impossible, it's just, it has happened before, but um, it's not the, the route you want to take when you want to win uh, a match, being 5-1 down in the best of 11. People. Quiet. No. Curious to see if they do end up going for that double time, right? I think both of us can agree that double time seems their, their best bet by far. Definitely. It's their, you know, technically their one of their last possible chances to uh, get a point up on the board here before Brazil goes back to their next pick. Obviously, being on match point gives them a very advantageous position uh, going into these last couple of maps, potentially here. They've been doing a really, really solid job of taking their own picks. And just like you said, Norway going to go right back in for GT1 right here, looking much better on the speed. And I think that, you know, they're going to have a chance to at least grab this map based on what we've seen thus far. Um, Brazil going to be... Looking to maybe make a recovery from that earlier DT pick, although they were certainly outclassed by Norway, from what it seemed. Definitely. Um, this map is a lot different from DT2, being the fact that this one is not technical. The patterns are really, really straightforward, but the big factor is Air 9, right? That 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 famous Air 9. Uh, uh, I would just say it's skill uh, Air 9 being like. A really different skill set being because the, the, the AR being so high uh, in comparison to like I believe last week was Air 8.5 the highest here in the DT pool so definitely a step forward step upwards in this pool and this is the first Air 9 DT we'll be seeing in the tournament being in the quarterfinals which is also something new to CBC last year so those were most of the time in the semifinals or finals even so but the map itself is relatively easy being the fact that the patterns are straightforward there's no memory in them um, the huge factor, yeah, as I said already, Air 90T, and it, if you play this with nerves, it's really difficult, in my opinion, because it's so fast, and if you're nervous, you you tend to overdash or underdash just a little bit, and that can ruin your entire experience on this one. So I'm really curious to see how both teams are going to perform on this, um, but Brazil's not out of this one just yet, given how this is completely different to DT2, but I think Norway does feel relatively confident on double time. Well, we'll see if they're able to maintain that, especially with that uh, higher approach rating on the DT1 pick right here. Again, just overall more comfortable as a team on Norway. It wasn't even just the difference of one player necessarily, just the entire performance making the difference. We're going to have to see a big switch. Again, one of the uh, longer maps in the pool with the DT1 here. It stays you know, a little bit less given the DT added on, but we are looking just for a little bit of more consistency. And when you throw in the approach rating there for a lot of players, that does become uh, a big ask. Norway once again opting in for more of the hiddens here. You see a lot of players actually opting for that on the higher approach rating picks. It really does help a lot with reading first and foremost. Definitely. You see Camera got on Vanilla being two choosing the, uh, hidden with Adolfo. Vanilla being the first to drop some early fans from Brazil, and they do seem way more confident on this one than the previous DT pick, given how all of them are approaching to an account, I believe. Like two of them didn't even get to an account the last pick, but Mackenzie trades up this for Vanilla, and that's going to give an early fans in favor from Norway as soon as everyone's above 200, because Vanilla's missed a little bit early, but the triple miss actually two on the Norwegian side, one on Brazilian side. Connor Lucia and Tanner versus Camera up right now. And that, that's just Brazil. Well, then are looking pretty good on this. Actually, the best in the lobby right now by just a little bit. Moving more confidently through this here. Camera God doing what he's been doing the entire match here, trying to put the Norwegian team on his back for just a little bit longer during this match right now. As long as Lucia and Thanar hold, though, he's going to have a difficult time making that work. We'll see what happens as we start to approach the halfway point of the map right now. But overall, Brazil... They're making that shift that we said they needed to have from that earlier DT pick right now. Just a lot more comfortable on this style. You're less technically intensive and more on that consistency there. It's going to be another two breaks from the Norwegian team here. And now we're going to start to get into a bad spot. Brazil does trade a breakout with Nakanshi and Saisef. But right now, Fenar and Lucia are going to make all the difference in the world for the Brazilian team. And definitely two FCs versus one. And let's keep in mind, this is Norwegian tournament life on the line, right? This is... Brazil's a match point lose back. Tana ends up dropping, though. That's huge for Norway, but Vanilla trades. Camera for Conan and Lucia right now. But that score is already 150,000 points. A huge buffer in favor of Brazil. And I think they need an absolute meltdown if they want to give this away. A quarter left. 
Conan and Lucia still with the FC Camera God as well, both in on Ooh. the 99 74 accuracy. Conan and Lucia dropping though, that's going to give you a, 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 some leeway for Norway. They have two couples buff to one, but they need Camille to get buff to one as well. But they need more miss coming from Brazil. But that's a double miss coming from Brazil, only one by Norway. So that's the fattest Norway. Camera God still with the FC actually. Huge performance coming from Camera God. 100,000 score difference, they need more. But there is a chance for Norway. One quarter left actually. Got it. Sisef needs to hold this combo as well as Camera God right here. They need both to stick into this. Vanilla putting up a big combo here right now would actually help them even more. Sisef does break the combo though. That's going to make it so much more difficult for Norway right now. There's a double break on the side. Oh, it's a three-way break actually on the side of Brazil. Camera God is just barely going to try and get this into the ending. There might be enough. There might be some time. Do you have match come to an end actually? That's 20,000 points. Uh, they need one more miss, I do believe. And there's a spinner at the end, but I don't oh, think this is no. actually. Oh, this oh. got really cool. Beautiful FC coming from Camera God, though. Beautiful FC, but sadly, that's an only 23,000 score difference. So not a huge score difference whatsoever. But Brazil ends up taking that six point. Um, yeah, I mean, Camera God, huge performance coming from, in, from him in this map, but also in this match. So definitely, like, the rock for Nori right now. Sadly, I do believe that um, this is going to be GG, right? Yeah. Unless I'm mistaken. I think this is going to be 6-1 in favor of Brazil. Sad, Let's isn't get... it? Or, yeah, I think Scripture yeah, might is. be... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is going to be GG indeed, yeah. But def either way, I mean, there were... I mean, that first pick being 50, k 50 points difference, that loss would be 23,000 points difference. It was possibilities for Norway, but sadly... It's not consistent enough, I do believe. And Brazil ends up taking, but this match was closer than they anticipated, even though I think the 6-1 scoreline is not, a, not, a, not fair to Norway. But sadly, it is what it is. We have to say goodbye to Norway. They'll be finishing in the 17th to 24th spot this year, joining teams like the Netherlands and um, Japan. So that's definitely well played by them, because the Netherlands and Japan are countries with rich CWC history as well. But beautiful performance coming from Brazil, actually. So. Um, but they have a really difficult task ahead of them because they have to face Italy, I believe, tomorrow. And yes. Italy being a top three favorite candidate for a lot of people, that is not uh, the matchup you'd like being Brazil. But they did show some strength on the mix mod bracket. I think they did beat Italy score on mix mod 2, for example. So there are possibilities for Brazil, but they're looking at a, a, a complete juggernaut as their opponent tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, big matches coming out here in these early rounds here, starting with the quarterfinals. A lot of losses for some strong teams in the earlier round. Just gives you an idea of how deep the player pool is this year. Uh, of course, that is uh, going to be continuing, actually. We're going to have our first secondary match of the losers bracket coming up. Uh, right after this, of course, Russia versus Poland, the 11th seed versus the 19th seeded. Both of these teams advancing from their first matches. We were just mentioning uh, Poland advancing, defeating the Netherlands 6-1, to one, and Russia defeating Japan 6-0 to zero just earlier today. Both of them looking very, very strong through those first matches. I think we're going to hope to see some uh, close matchups between these two very strong teams in the loser's bracket already. Yeah, definitely. And I, this is a match for uh, finishing the top 12, I do believe. The loser of this match finishes between 12 and 16. So, I mean, both of these teams are really, really strong. Uh, Poland kind of, well, they kind of play bad on the qualifiers, they did some set, but they're a really, really strong team. Being 96, uh, seed 19 is definitely not what they actually are. Um, Russia being seed 11, but the issue with Russia right now is they're lacking their captain. Their captain has PC issues and all that kind of stuff. So, I'm not sure which team is favored in that match, but I do believe that's going to be a really, really close matchup. Um, 